Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, this is number three, the video number three on embryology. We are going to finish up that second week today and then we'll get into gastrulation in the next video. So this one should be pretty short. We don't have too much left to do. Okay, remember where we left off? We had a we had a blastocyst implant into the endometrial lining. It went through the lining into the stroma. We talked about uh, in the previous videos the morula, the 16-celled zygote becoming a blastomere. Once it be once it developed a a cavity in here, then we talked about the trophoblast, which was surrounding kind of the outside edge of the blastomere, it started producing cells in the front end here toward the emb embryonic pole. And these turned into this weird cancerous-like tissue almost called the syncytiotrophoblast. It pulled the blastocyst into the cavity or into the endometrial stroma. Uh, we talked about the formation of the bilaminar disc. Uh, where we have epiblast and hypoblast, kind of our crude uh, crude little human right here, if you will. Uh, that formed an amniotic cavity, which was surrounded by an amnion. And that's where we, uh, this is about where we are. We're a little bit further it's in. We talked about the blood vessels as well. Okay, so that's where we were. Now, the next story, we're about day nine now. We're getting kind of close to the end of week two. And we have two waves that come down for the hypoblast. So the hypoblast creates two different cell lines. Uh, and they literally migrate around that primary yolk sac is what happens for this first wave. And it eventually lines that primary yolk sac, uh, or aka blastocele. Okay, um, this picture shows, here's the... Uh, the hypoblast right here and you can see it giving rise to a new cell population and the cell population is pretty soon going to line this uh, blastocele and yeah that's what happens uh, it, so this new membrane is called Heusser's membrane there's some AKAs for this we gotta be careful on boards with this one one is the exocelomic membrane. Uh, one is parietal endoderm. That's Carlson, that really deep in, uh, embryology book. I'm liking that more and more. Uh, that calls it the parietal endoderm. So that makes it confusing. Everybody should get on the same page. Uh, I'm going to go with our board books, uh, use uh, Heusser's membrane. So that's the one I'm going to go with. So again, Heusser's membrane arises. Uh, from this layer right here, the hypoblast layer, new cells are created by mitosis and they're spit out and they go down and down and down on each side until we have another layer. Okay, that's Heuser's membrane. And the name change. So, got some house cleaning to do. Once Heuser's membrane is in place, and I, I already kind of messed this up, uh, before Hauser's membrane is if this wasn't here, this is called the blastocele of the blastocyst. But once Heuser's membrane is completely around this cavity, this blastocele, it changes names and it becomes the primary yolk sac. Primary yolk sac. Now chiropractors have to watch out about this one. More, which is one of the board, uh, the board books, the Board of Chiropractic Examiner books that they take questions from. Moore calls it, he's the only author that calls it this, the umbilical vesicle. And he goes on kind of a rant about we're not birds and our yolk sac is small so we shouldn't call it. But all the other authors call it a primary yolk sac. Okay, got that? So we just formed uh, Heuser's membrane and we converted the old blastocele into the primary yolk sac. Are we good? So here is Heuser's membrane now complete. So here's the old blasto. Uh, here's the old uh, the old blasto seal. Uh, but we don't call it that anymore uh, because it now changes names because it has a new lining. So it's called the primary yolk sac now. Okay. 
did we change? We already changed the trophoblast layer too. Remember that one? This used to be called the trophoblast layer, uh, but that uh, was changed as well to a cytotrophoblast once the syncytiotrophoblast, these light green cells, uh, once the trophoblast started producing these, this weird syncytiotrophoblast, this layer changed names and now is called cytotrophoblast. It used to be called trophoblast. Okay, time to make some new tissue. So formation of the exo. Uh, or the extra embryonic mesoderm. This is actually important. This is going to go with us for quite a while. So uh, about day 12 or so, uh, a new layer of cells is going to form between the very outer cytotrophoblast and the very inner, which is Heuser's membrane, or the amnion if we're around the amniotic cavity. I'll show you a picture in a minute. This new layer that starts to build up there is called the extra embryonic mesoderm. There's going to be an intraembryonic mesoderm that's super important. This is not it. This is extraembryonic mesoderm. Okay, so here it is, already pretty well developed. So here's Heuser's membrane. There's our primary yolk sac. Here's our bilaminar disc, amniotic cavity. And this layer, remember if we go back to here, there's nothing between Heuser's membrane and the cytotrophoblast, nothing. Okay, but over time, most of the authors seem to think the Heuser's membrane cells kind of uh, start multiplying and, and filling in here and building this layer up. But they're not exactly sure where it comes from. Uh, but with time, now we can see we have a huge new layer here. Uh, and that's the extraembryonic mesoderm. Extraembryonic mesoderm. That's going to push. See, it hasn't made it up here yet. Uh, we still have the cytotrophoblast layer, uh, this kind of gray layer, and nothing is formed yet uh, between the amnion and the cytotroph cytotrophoblast layer. But these cells, this will start building up in here, as we'll see in a minute. Pretty soon it'll surround the entire, the entire zygote except for something called the connecting stalk. But the star of this slide is now we have a new tissue that we didn't have, and it's between Heuser's membrane and the cytotrophoblast. That's called the extraembryonic mesoderm. Where does it come from? See, this is what drives you crazy about studying embryology. Langman said it comes from yolk, a yolk cell or yolk sac cells. That's the first time I've ever heard that before. But uh, some Googling, I think, some investigation, I think he's means uh, that Heuser's membrane is kind of some some kind of non-mainstream authors have called this yolk sac membrane. Um, so I think Langman is talking about it comes from Heuser's membrane cells. Um, so what but more another board these are both board of chiropractic examiners books right Langman and more uh, that's a, they say it comes from the visceral endoderm which is an aka for Heuser's membrane so at least those two, for chiropractors then, it comes from the uh, Heuser's membrane or visceral endoderm. Uh, Carlson, the, which is the king kind of book, uh, it says it comes from two sources. It says it comes from parietal endoderm, which is yet another AKA for Heuser's membrane. Uh, so at least all three of these books say it comes from Heuser's membrane. I think that's what yolk sac cells mean. Uh, but Carlson also says the primitive streak also lays down uh, cells that come out of the posterior portion of the primitive streak also make part of it up. Uh, Sing, the eye Sing, uh, he says it comes from trophoblast cells. That's probably not a great one, right? Because trophoblast cells are, first of all, it's the wrong word. should be cytotrophoblast cells, uh, but he's the only one that says that. Larson says it comes uh, from the hypoblast and primary yolk sac. So does he mean the cells? I think he's talking about Holzer's membrane. So uh, very difficult. Embryology is tough because these authors are all over the place. All right, so <clears throat> here's what we have so far. This is the extraembryonic mesoderm. And notice now it's actually split itself uh, up here between, uh, between the amnion and the cytotrophoblast layer. So now we have it surrounding 
pretty much surrounding everything. We'll see about the connecting stock here in a second. Okay, everybody good with that? There's a real 12-day human embryo, and you can see the extra embryonic mesoderm is right here. Here's Heuser's membrane, this little pink layer. Primary yolk sac is here. Here's our bilaminar disc, epiblast, hypoblast. Uh, yep, a cytotrophoblast layers going all the way around it here. Okay, pretty cool. So the next thing that happens, remember we have this nice solid extra embryonic mesoderm. All of a sudden it's going to start getting these cavities in it. So a whole bunch of these little cavities start forming within it. And uh, those are called extra embryonic cavities. So they start popping up everywhere. And you guessed it, they're going to class, coalesce into one big giant cavity, which is going to be with us for a long time. That's called the chorionic cavity. So get back to the slides. Eventually the cavities coalesce together. So these guys all morph into one cavity, as I'll show you in a second. Uh, and those are called either the extra embryonic coelom, extra embryonic coelom, coelom. Uh, or I've learned it, always learned it as the chorionic cavity, and that's a strong AKA for it. So I'm going to call it the, extra, uh, the chorionic cavity. Okay, so this chorionic cavity now actually splits our extra embryonic mesoderm. Remember how beautiful that was? There's the extra embryonic mesoderm. So we got cavities. We're going to split this into two layers. So let's see what that looks like. So there we go. Here's our new chorionic cavity. And it's, it hasn't split up here yet. We still have solid mesoderm up here, extra embryonic mesoderm. Uh, but here it's split it in two. And so that gives us two different mesoderm layers. And we have a splanchnic mesoderm and we have a parietal, or I'm sorry, we we'll call it the somatic mesoderm out here. And we'll look at the AKs for that. Okay. Like, uh... Oh, I see. So this slide is showing the couple things. It's showing the pinching, but we'll get to that in a second. The second wave it shows, but we'll get to that in a second. The point of this is that the chorionic cavity that's forming between this outer layer of mesoderm and this inner layer of mesoderm, uh, it's actually still developing. And this cavity will stop about here. And it'll keep going and stop about here. And it'll leave one thick chunk of mesoderm intact uh, and that's going to be the the uh, umbilical future umbilical cord it's called the connecting stalk right now but the point of this slide is the chorionic cavity is still growing like crazy uh, and it's going to keep growing like crazy so we got two new tissues as i said there's an extra embryonic somato or somatic mesoderm and a that's the outer layer and an extra embryonic splanchnic mesoderm. There's some kind of famous AKAs for these unfortunately. Uh, somatic, somatic mesoderm is a good one but somatopleuric mesoderm uh, is a common one that I believe Carlson uses that one. Somato, somatopleuric and splanchnopleuric mesoderm. So these guys mean the same thing unfortunately. Uh, so which ones will show up on boards? Probably intraembryonic somatic mesoderm and splanchnic mesoderm. This is the inside one. This is splanchnic all around here. And um, this is the somatic mesoderm out here. Okay. Um, everything I just said. So there's the somatic mesoderm or the somatopleuric mesoderm, whichever book your, your instructor is using. Splanchno, splanchnic uh, splanchnic mesoderm would be again this one right here on the inside. What about this tissue? That's still just extra embryonic mesoderm. It hasn't split. The chorionic cavity hasn't hasn't dug its way into that yet, uh, but it will in a bit. Okay, everybody good by that? In fact, Larson, which is a book I really he's a good better storyteller I think than the rest. And, um, he doesn't he doesn't even make that differentiation. He just says. Let's just call it extra embryonic mesoderm and leave it at that. Okay, so these, according to Langman, later on the intraembryonic mesoderm 
uh, will kind of merge with something called the lateral plate mesoderm. So we'll talk about that when it comes, but lateral, lateral plate mesoderm is important, and we'll talk about that as we get into week four. Now what's the chorion? This is always very confusing uh, for students. Uh, the chorion is nothing more than two layers, uh, and they call it the chorion. So it's the somatic mesoderm, the outer layer of mesoderm, extra embryonic, you call extra embryonic somatic mesoderm, and the old uh, cytotrophoblast. So when those two layers come together, you have just formed what's called the chorion. Okay? cares about the chorion, that's basically going to become the placenta of the fetus. So that's a very important layer. It's going to completely encircle the yolk sac and the amniotic cavity except at that connecting stalk. Okay, so here we see uh, it's still our chorionic cavity hasn't quite formed yet, but you, I wanted to show you what the chorion was. So uh, this layer is forming that's the that's the somatic mesoderm uh, and that's our cytotrophoblast layer in light green those two layers together make up the chorion not this dark green what is this dark green stuff that's syncytiotrophoblast okay that's that weird cancer-like tissue that literally pulled the blastocyst inside the uh, into the endometrium okay there it is, a blow-up of that. All right, formation. Now, this is this was a really tough story to figure out, and because we don't have that many human embryos to work with, so they really don't know the story, and they rely on primates, monkeys, and birds, and other animals to get most of this story. So that's probably why it's so confusing. But I think I got it down pretty good now. Had to go into PubMed and actually read some recent research and to understand it. But so this is where our second wave. If you're a surfer, doesn't that look incredible? Man, a great left right there. Uh, but our second wave is now going to come down from the hypoblast. Remember what did the first wave of new cells came down and made? What what are those cells called? That was Heuser's membrane. But now we have a second wave on top of Heuser's membrane that comes down. Uh, and this is going to give rise what's called uh, the secondary yolk sac. Okay, so this this new wave of cells is going to push the old primary yolk sac away toward the aembryonic pole. Let's look at a picture here in a second. Oh, but this is a double process. We'll talk through it, then we'll look at it. At the same time as these cells are coming down, the the splanchnic mesoderm is going to get pinched inward or pushed inward by our growing chorion. Our, I'm sorry, growing chorionic cavity, that should say. Chorionic cavity is working its way up toward the embryonic pole, but it also pushes right in the center of the primary yolk sac and kind of starts to pinch it off. And these two processes of new cells coming down and pinching creates a new cavity called the secondary yolk sac. So here's the chorionic cavity. Uh, it's moving, it's growing this way, we talked about it, but it's also pinching here. Remember our primary yolk sac was used to take up all this space. Chorionic cavity is now pinching it in on both sides. Uh, and at the same time, we have these new cells that are being born from hypoblast cells. I made them pink in color. Uh, so we can see it's lining on top of these yellow cells. That was Heuser's membrane. And then what was this, students? What was this layer right here? Good. Extra embryonic splanchnic mesoderm, or splanchnopleuric mesoderm, if you go by Carlson. Okay. And they kind of, as this pinches in, they kind of form a bottom here. So we've just created a, a new sac. I mean, we really just pinched off the old primary the big yolk sac cavity here, right? Because this is what's left of the primary yolk sac here. But but because we've created a new space, this is called the secondary yolk sac. Everybody good with that? And as you can see, the chorionic cavity pinches it down to nothing. In fact, this will atrophy away and you get nothing. So right under the bilaminar disc, now we have a secondary yolk sac, which 
used to be the primary yolk sac, right? Uh, the most, I guess that would be dorsal part uh, of the primary yolk sac. And here's the old, the more ventral portion of the old primary yolk sac is still here, but this is going to degenerate away into nothing a little bit. Everybody good with that? So we just formed two cavities. You can see that new layer of cells. What's that new layer of cells called? A new layer of cells. They believe it or not, they have not named this. Um, so I cannot find any name for it. They just, all the authors say a new layer of cells. No one's named it yet. So that's good. They can't really test you on it. Well, I guess they could. So, sp uh, splanctic mesoderm is disintegrating. As we said, that means this is really, that's all that's left of that splanctic uh, mesoderm. Except here, that's still splanctic mesoderm, right? There's somatic mesoderm up here. That's all somatic mesoderm. Here's a mixture of it, but that's still splanctic mesoderm there. But it's going away. Okay, soon will be completely gone. Pretty much everything I already said. The chorionic cavity is completely taken over. And here, the chorionic cavity has completely taken over. Uh, so we have a gigantic chorionic cavity, much bigger than the secondary yolk sac. Uh, and then we have that tiny bit of, just a little bit of primary yolk sac left, but that's almost completely gone. Um, so is the, where's the splanchnic mesoderm? Extra embryonic splanchnic mesoderm, that's gone too, except for right here. We still got a little bit of it hanging around here. But that's it. That's all somatic, somatic mesoderm. Okay. Okay, so secondary definitive. That's an AK for that. So watch out for that. There's another strong, I think, uh, who was it? Moore, I think, used definitive yolk sac. So uh, the secondary definitive yolk sac is the major structure associated with the developing embryo, the primary yolk sac is gone. Uh, we won't get into this now, but this is a major site for hemopoiesis where the blood is formed. Talk a tiny bit about that in a second. Okay, we're winding down already. We got to talk about this uh, Atlantois. So let's check this out and the connecting stalk. So as I said, the chorionic cavity pinched everything off except one little, one little isthmus right here. Uh, and that's called the connecting stalk, this region. What's it made of? Think about that for a second. Well, there's the somatic mesoderm, and there's the splanchnic mesoderm. So it's really made of splanchnic mesoderm here, and the outer portion of it here is made of somatic mesoderm. Okay, but the cor so the chorionic cavity doesn't go completely around it, leaves this. This is going to become the future umbilical cord. Right? This is all happening about day 13. Now we're almost done with week two. So connecting stock. Okay, here's a good question, a good board question perhaps, or a good one of my test questions since I'm teaching this now. Uh, so what does the connecting stock suspend? What structures are suspended by the connecting stock within the chorionic cavity? What's all this stuff? So what's all this stuff? Well, we got the amniotic cavity. We got this layer here. That is the, what's that one? The amnion. We got the bilaminar disc, the epiblast in blue, the hypoblast in yellow. Uh, we got down here, we got that weird layer. Seems like it's kind of disappeared, but we got Heuser's membrane is in there still. We got a little bit of splanchnopleuric mesoderm or splanchnic mesoderm. And we got uh, anything else? That's about it. Right? That's even more than I listed. But there's the amniotic cavity, bilaminar disc, hypoblast, epiblast, or the hypoblast and epiblast, secondary yolk sac. Okay, good with that. Uh, this uh, elantois, elantois how that's pronounced, Alantois. I always learned it the Lantois, but Alantois on day 16. So, I mean, technically, uh, no, we're not quite done with it the second week yet. Yeah, we are done with the second week, aren't we? We're starting the third week. 
7 is the first week to 14, yeah. But anyway, around day 16, uh, the posterior wall of the yolk sac develops a little diverticulum, a little outpouching. What's a great example of a diverticulum in the, in the gut cavity in the human, in the abdomen? The appendix is a perfect example of a diverticulum. So we get a little appendix-like thing called the atlantois. And it's a hollow tube and extends from the connecting stalk. Uh, this will eventually connect to the umbilicus. So here it is. That's it, atlantois. So this eventually will go all the way to the belly button. And actually, it goes through a couple phases, but it's going to give some strength to the umbilical plate and help prevent hernias from occurring by adding a little extra tissue there. But there it is. Okay. Now this is important. In humans, uh, this hollow tube doesn't do anything. It's said to be vestigial. So we don't have a purpose for this. Uh, but if it doesn't close right, we can certainly get some birth defects, uh, some, some problems with... Uh, that open tube, you can actually leak urine out of your belly button when you're born. We'll get to that when the time comes. So when something doesn't work anymore, we call it a vestigial organ or rudimentary organ. Uh, in other species, it mainly was used for uh, removing urinary waste and putting it into the mother's uh, umbilical cord. But in humans, we have other ways to do that. In birds, it's actually used for respiratory. Respiratory waste is transmitted through it. Okay, uh, genesis of the first microcirculation and blood cells. So almost done with our story. But we need to talk about something called the primary, secondary, and tertiary chorionic villi. So at the very end of the second week, remember our chorion? was our chorion that was the cytotrophoblast plus the extra embryonic extra embryonic somatic mesoderm um, those two or that layer that chorion layer starts poking out uh, kind of like a little like a little tooth projection or a little pointed projection I'll see a picture in a second um, and it's believed to be induced by the somatic mesoderm so growth fact or not growth factors but transcription factors are turned on and these it, programs these cells to do this. But let's take a look uh, at what it is. So here is the the chorion, of course. I drew it again for you. Somatic mesoderm um, cytotrophoblast is right here. And this layer starts pushing outward into these little spikes. There's one there. There's one there. There's one there. See it's filled with mesoderm here. So when it just starts doing that, this has not morphed into mesenchyme. This is going to become a very powerful embryonic tissue here, uh, regenerative tissue here in a second, but not yet. So when it's just poking out a little bit without any mesenchyme, it's called the primary chorionic villi. What happens next? Mesenchyme tissue gets laid down. Uh, so the cells, and we're not sure where it comes from, but... This turns into a mesenchyme, which is uh, can really turn into just about anything. And once the mesenchyme tissue is there, it's called a secondary chorionic villi. Secondary chorionic villi. Let's take a look at that. This little drawing. So there's our finger-like projections, which have gotten a little deeper. But now it's got like this little light green tissue in there, and that represents the mesenchyme. Okay, and mesenchyme can turn into anything, but this is already pre-programmed. What's it going to turn into? Blood vessels. There's kind of a blow-up of that mesenchyme. There it is there. So this would be a secondary chorionic villi because it's filled with mesenchyme. Tertiary chorionic villi. So the mesenchyme is actually going to differentiate into arteries, veins, and and capillaries so the microcirculation is born and even some small arteries and small veins are born inside of these things some blood cells are formed from this m amazing mesenchymal tissue which can make uh, anything if we wanted to make a tooth we could make a tooth we want to make a heart here we can make a heart but this is predestined uh, because of the expression of many different proteins around it 
to form, the mesenchyme turns into these blood vessels. Okay, it starts out as a microcirculation, uh, and you can see it becomes quite extensive. We'll learn this actually hooks up to the heart pretty soon. All right, everybody good with that? All right, so recapping, here's a great board question slide or a great my question slide. Little star here by it. Uh, the week, the second week in embryology, second week of human development, is often called the week of twos. Uh, and this is because a lot of things double. So let's look at some of these doubling. First of all, our trophoblast differentiates into a, it creates a syncytiotrophoblast. And then it, when it does that, it gets renamed a cytotrophoblast. The inner cell mass, remember that thing? We talked about that in the last video, the expression of different genes uh, created two layers, an epiblast and a hypoblast. The hypoblast went on, do you remember what that went on to form? That actually split into another type of cells, anterior visceral endoderm cells. But that would mess up our week of twos, wouldn't it? So we left it, or Langman left, this isn't mine, this is Langman talking. Uh, left it as that. Then we have extra embryonic mesoderm. Remember a chorionic cavity developed and split that into two layers, an outer and inner. And the outer layer was called the somatic mesoderm and the inner layer was called the splanctic mesoderm. And we formed two cavities. We formed the amniotic cavity and we formed the yolk sac cavity as well, a secondary yolk sac cavity. All right, so that was a quick one. That's the end of week two. Uh, week, three, week three, things are going to get crazy. We're going to start talking about gastrulation, and we're bringing back some more transcription factors and genes, and yeah, we'll have a good time. But hope you enjoyed the video. Give me some thumbs up if you like it, and we'll see you in the next one.